All right, what's up? This is the Hoops With Us episode 10 podcast. I'm joined by a very, very special guest today. Uh, my guy, Elijah Hughes, one of the top uh, players in college basketball last year. Elijah, how's it going, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Chilling, chilling. All right, so I got a couple questions for you today. Uh, I know everybody's stuck in the house with this coronavirus stuff going on. Yeah, it's wild. I know. All right, so the first question I got for you today is you attended uh, East Carolina University mm -hmm. your freshman year. Uh, and you ended up transferring. Did you transfer because you think you could play at a higher level, or was there another reason? Uh, and the, the main reason for the transfer was uh, just comfort level. Uh, I just didn't feel comfortable at East Carolina any, anymore at the time. It wasn't nothing personal, none uh, my team, teammates or coaches or anything like that. It was just a decision I felt better, felt better about coming closer to home, uh, being in a bigger conference. And uh, it was just kind of just comfort level. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next question I got for you is, uh, so your three years of playing so far and you had the red shirt after your transfer year. Tell yeah. me a little bit about uh, how your red shirt year went. Uh, it was good. It was good. In, it was good and bad, I guess, but mostly good because uh, anybody playing basketball just wants to play basketball. And it's simple as that. Um, it was hard sitting out. A lot of games we play, we lose them by like six or seven points. And that was kind of just you know, a hard pill to swallow, knowing that you, you could have went in there and kind of impacted and helped got the win. But also from from the good side, you know, I got better. I got much better. I became a sponge, uh, just listening to guys, listening to coach, learn how to play the zone, and uh, learn ins and outs of just how things work here at Syracuse. You know, it, was, it was really big for me. Yeah, I was seeing you. You going viral a little bit, going crazy on the bench and stuff I saw on your yeah. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So uh, the next question I got for you is your three years playing. What do you think was uh, the most fun game that you have played in? Most fun game I've played in, I'd probably say we played at Duke last year at Cameron Indoor. That game was nothing like, nothing like it. it was, I don't think there would ever be a game in my life that would top that game. We were we were unranked at the time. They were the number one team in the country, and they had obviously Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett. Uh, I don't think Cam Reddish played. I think he was sick. Yeah, he was out that game. Yeah, uh, Trey Jones got hurt early, but just that environment and – you know, coming out there with a win was it was just crazy. It was just, everything about that game was crazy. <laughs> was that the uh, that was the game that you hit the like eighty footer, right? Yeah, yeah. Going yeah, in half. That. It was like a three quarter court shot. Kind of just you know sent up a prayer and it just dropped <laughs> in. <laughs> and then you caught you caught a crazy dunk on uh, RJ that game too. How'd yeah. that feel? It was kind of just you know it was a play we had written up where uh, Marek gets the ball in the, in the high post area and I kind of just cut back door and Marek threw an unbelievable pass right on the money and I just got it. I just went up um, I saw RJ kind of late and uh he was in no position to block it and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna jump but he jumped and yeah. then uh the rest is kind of history and um there's pretty uh, there's a pretty dope picture from that moment too oh yeah I saw it on your Instagram it's fire <laughs> all right man so uh like you said uh you played against Zion in that game tell me what it was like playing against such a insane athlete like him right well he's 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 a generational kind of guy like he's somebody that we're not going to see – someone not going to see nobody like him for a long time, if ever. Um, he's the best player I've played against, uh, most dominant. Um, no, it, it was crazy. Like, just, just how, how forceful he was and how powerful and explosive and his skill level, it was just all – like, it was just crazy. And it was – he's one of the best players, if not the best player I've played against. I've played against. Yeah, I remember watching that game, man. That was an exciting game, bro. It was crazy. It was crazy. All right, so next question I got for you is – uh. I'll be watching a lot of your games, and I see you be coming out in uh, some great feats. Tell, yeah. me what, uh, tell me what your uh, favorite shoes that are playing. I know you'd be playing in some Jordans and, right. like, different Nikes and stuff. Like, tell me what your favorite ones are. Uh, that's hard, man. I don't – I got a lot of sneakers. Uh, I haven't played in all my shoes I wanted to play in. Uh, I was going to – I was hopefully we were going to make a run in the tournament, and I was going to bring out some fire for the tournament. But, you know, it wasn't able to happen. But uh, my favorite – I don't know. I the Benny Hanna custom Giannis ones. It was a I fire. Those. I played against Duke in those and uh, Georgia Tech in those. I like those a lot. Uh, hmm. I played in Dornbacher 15s against Wake Forest at Wake Forest last year. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite to be honest. I, I can't say my favorite. <laughs> too many, huh? <laughs> too way too many. Uh, yeah. So like you were saying uh, before. I remember watching the game against UNC right before the uh, everything got canceled. Right. And you guys played UNC, and that was the first round, right? Uh, 
That's yeah, I think so. Pretty yeah, sure. First round. So, and you had 30 or something like that, right? Yeah, I was 27. <laughs> yeah, we can jack that. As 30. All right. So tell me what it was like uh, scoring 30 in the ACC tournament on a team like North Carolina. Um, it was fun. You know, it was like, it was just a lot of fun knowing like North Carolina came to our place and beat us earlier in the year. It was kind of like we took a personal. And uh, Cole Anthony had said something. I don't know. It kind of went viral. He said something after their first game that you know, we're, we're a top 10 team in the country right now. and Nobody wants to see us. I remember he said that. And I kind of just got it, our fires going, our fire going. And we just was like, from the jump, we wanted to just show that, you know, you guys were, whatever your record is for a reason, you know, we were a better team. Um, and I was just, we just wanted to come out and step on their throat. Yeah, you guys dominated that whole game. And yeah. the whole game, I watched that whole game. The focus, right. we, the focus we had, like, even in shoot around that day was just unreal. Like, I was just so locked in. We were just so ready to go. And it was – their focus level was unbelievable. Yeah, it definitely showed that focus level during that game. Yeah. All right, so uh, tell me what it's like playing under Coach Beheim. We obviously know he's one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time. Uh, tell me what it was like playing under him. That's been great. You know, he's a, he's a basketball genie. Uh, he's a wizard. That dude, he remembers everything. He knows – he knows plays like the back of their head from games that were years ago, centuries ago, decades ago. He, he's he's one of a kind, and um, he's a really he's just really smart basketball mind. Like, he knows a lot about the game. He's helped me in situations to be better and situate the same situations in the next, the next game or stuff like that. And he's just also a great person. You know, somebody good to have in my corner, somebody I trust. I mean, somebody I'm gonna have in my corner for the rest of my life. Absolutely, man. I remember meeting him when I was playing AAU like when I was in 10th grade and he's just like seems like a down to earth guy and seems yeah, like he, super down to earth. See, seems like he really cares about his players and stuff like exactly. that. He's definitely a player's coach. For sure. For sure. All right, next question I got for you bro is uh has how did it feel leading the uh, ACC in scoring this past season? Uh it, it was cool, you know, I, I guess. Uh it wasn't nothing really I was focused on. Um you know, I know for my team I got to score the ball. Uh it wasn't it wasn't necessarily saying anything like I was looking forward to doing was just leading the team in points or leading the league in points every game. I just wanted to come out and do what I had to do to help us get a win. Uh, but it was cool. You know, it was, it was a tough league, competitive league. And at the end of the year, I, I held my own with scoring champ, as scoring champ. And uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, congrats on that, by the way, man. That Thank was you. awesome watching you do Thank that. You. And like I, uh, we were talking about when I first set you up to this podcast, me and Elijah were both from the uh, 845. He's about 40 sure. minutes away from me and the uh, – I'm from Kingston. He's from Beacon, New York. So uh, the 845 guys are definitely showing out for you. For sure. For sure. Uh, all right, man. So uh, I got two more questions for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the uh, game against Georgetown. I think it was your sophomore yeah. year. Yeah. And uh, Tyus hit that shot. Just give me uh, the plan going into the game, the atmosphere right. during the game, and just like the game, mm -hmm. like all in general. Tell me about it. Well, first and foremost, Syracuse and Georgetown, we hate each other. They hate <laughs> us. We hate them. We want to kill them. They want to kill us. This is how it is. This is how it's always going to be. So going into it, we kind of knew that it was going to be a gritty, grind it out. We got to, we're going to be fighting, clawing, whatever we got to do to get a win. And early on, they were they were beating us bad. I think they were up by like 15 or something in the second half, up 15. And we came back and, you know, Tyus led us. He made some crazy plays, big time defensive plays, offensive plays. He was just easily the best player on the court that day. And then it came down to one, the last possession. Uh, we was down by one. And the play was – coach really wrote it up for me to get the ball and go down and make a play. Whether I'm shooting the ball or getting somebody's shot, go and make a play. So they're pressing us a little bit because coach wanted me to get the ball because he assumed that – and he knew that Tyus would be getting double because he just yeah. went on a crazy run. And so he was like, my next option is to give to Elijah and like, let him make a play. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm going out there thinking, like, it's my moment. Like, I'm, <laughs> hype. I'm about to get it. So I go get the ball. They inbound it. I just see Ty sprint, like sprint towards me to get the ball. So I'm like, dang, I got to get this. <laughs> so I gave it to him. And then uh, he just kind of went. He kind of went. And O'Shea said, like, a, like a, middle, a little middle, like, ball screen kind of. And from my angle, it looked like they were going to call offensive foul, like, off, like a – on the charge? Yeah, no, on the screen. Offensive, I mean, on the screen. Yeah. The screen. It looked kind of weird, but they didn't call it. And uh, Ty's rose up. And so my next thought was offensive rebound. At this point, there was like a second left. Let's mm -hmm. get a tip or something. And so I'm going to the rim. It looked like it was going to be short. He just 
nailed it, and the Shout place went it. crazy. It was crazy. It was so loud in there. We was hyped. And uh, they had like a little bit of time left on the clock. So uh, Georgetown actually got a good look. They uh, they took the ball out with like, I think one point something left on the clock. They took it out. They threw it to Javon Blair, middle of half court. He got it, turned around. And I swear, I thought it was money. He shot it from half, <laughs> I thought it was cash. And I was I was like, dang, it's our turn now to throw that pain. Yep. And he missed it. And uh, it was just kind of like a sign of relief. And it felt good that we had just beaten Georgetown like that. Coming back with the surgery he had and Ty explained the way he played and everyone just stepping up. It was just a great game. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So the last question I got for you today, mm -hmm. we all know that uh, coach Bayheim runs his uh, famous two, three zone. Uh, right. I noticed this year that you were catching some crazy blocks some crazy pins. So tell me about uh, how you came into this season, looking at it as a def uh, defense standpoint, mm -hmm. like what was your mindset? Well, uh, going into it, like even my first year being eligible to play, uh, it was going to be a learn, kind of a learning curve for me because it's a zone. It's it's not easy. People think it's easy. People think it's you know, you're playing a zone, so we're able to get threes up. Or and no, it's not. It's not like when people think at all. It's actually really difficult to get shots up when it's played correctly. Uh, it has man principles, um, and it's just it's not, like I said. It, it's it's a it's a hassle. It really is to get a good look from three or from anywhere in the court, but um. So this year was kind of like my veteran year, kind of just, you know, I know where to be, know when to be here, uh, no personnel, all that kind of thing. So I kind of had a better sense of how to play the zone. It was more like teaching young guys like Quincy, stuff like that, of just where to be in, stuff, in situations. And um, yeah, so you know, getting blocks is really all about just timing and obviously athleticism. And um, I feel like I have a good, good balance of both of those. And uh, I got some really big time blocks. Yeah, that was awesome, man. That zone is definitely hard. Like, if you guys are rotating the right yeah. way and stuff, like you said, it's real hard right. to get a shot off. I think last year the, the best I've seen us move was against Duke at, at Duke and, and Cameron. It was like their last – it's like their last possession of overtime. They needed a big-time bucket, and we were just moving. Like, it was crazy to just watch and watch it on film and being a part of it. We were everywhere. I don't think – no, no team in the country would have got a shot off in that position against us. We were, we were moving like crazy. Um, guys were active, hands were flying around. You got six, 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 five at the top of the zone, and six, six plus at the bottom of the zone. You know, moving with active hands, active feet, talking. It was just crazy. I remember that possession, like looking at the shot clock. Like, they're not, not going to get a shot off, and they, <laughs> they, they, they got one off with like three seconds left, and we rebounded it. That was, that was the game. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Well, bro, that's all the uh, questions I got for you today. Uh, I want to—I re really appreciate you joining me on the show today. It means a lot. For sure, for sure. And uh, hope that you stay safe during all this stuff. And uh, thank we'll you, definitely, you too, bro. Yeah, we'll definitely do some more work work soon, man. All right, thank you. Yeah, no doubt, Elijah. See you, man. Yep. Bombs are going off That's it for episode 10 of the Hoops With Us podcast. I want to give a very special shout out to my guy, Elijah. Really appreciate you for coming on the show, man. Uh, he's a great player. Definitely future NBA player. So I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, like I say in all my other videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. More new content will continue to be released. My calendar is almost full for the rest of this month with podcasts almost every day coming out. So if you guys would please tune in, please tell your friends about the channel. Please tell them to watch my videos if they love basketball. All right, thanks a lot, guys. See you next episode.